show me your models of, of four and five D. Oh yeah. My well, they're not models, but to explain how this works, I have adult butt plug. Um, just kidding. This is I swear to God, this is great to roll your back on, and it's yeah, the only I, tennis ball that I have. I use those for, okay. for, 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 my, for my feet sometimes and my shoulder. Yeah, they're great, and I just don't want to untape them. But I really only need one for this. But Understood. I just don't want to untape it. So we're gonna we're gonna do uh, we're gonna show basically from the point of view of two D how things are flat, and then yeah. we're gonna show from point of view of three D, yeah. which I'm very hip to. I'm <laughs> very excited for our four Ds and five Ds. It's oh, it gets super crazy, but if you can shrink it all down, it makes a lot more sense. Honestly, one of the best videos about it is uh, Carl Sagan. He did uh, an episode of it on Cosmos in like 1980 or something. Yeah, that's the best video. Seen it. Yeah, I, I always, every time I explain this, I'm always like, I feel like such a poser because I'm like, yeah, he does such a great job and he's so he's slower than I am. Like when he talks, and I feel like I'm. You know, like, it's Burr. funny. It's funny because I, I do think it's important to give credit. Uh, I also, yeah. I also uh, think it's an interesting concept that. We are humans are what we are because of our ability to read and write and to yeah. ex have ideas and expand upon them over a generation. I mean, Sagan didn't get them. He didn't develop everything himself. No. You know, he was a big Newton fan, by the way, the cookies. The cookies. I don't know what that is. He was a big fig Newton fan. Oh, <laughs> oh OK. I'm like, those are those are old cookies. Gold, gold, Jeez. Gold, gold. It was the 70s and 80s. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, those yeah. So, so, so show us. Okay. Also, keep in mind that a lot of people are audio only. Oh, yeah, that's totally fine. I can I describe mean, it, too. OK. Yeah, it's really easy. I have a piece of paper here with a circle drawn on it. That's good for that's access it. disability. Do you yes. know about that? No. A lot of people who are seeing impaired, there's options for closed captioning for hearing impaired. But for seeing impaired, there's there's the uh, I don't know exactly what it's called, but for accessibility where when people aren't talking, like what I just did yeah. in those moments, it'll be like, as the dog chews on his bone, she sits there no holding way. two pieces of paper with circles on them. And it's like, oh, sick. It's like a book. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> He's really into that. So I have a piece of paper here with one circle drawn on it. We're going to move that to the side for now. So this is a 2D world. Right. And the idea is to imagine Looking that. The camera too, we see ooh, it. Yeah, there we go. So this is a 2D world. So we're imagining eventually we're going to imagine like this is us in our world. So the thing with dimensions is one dimension is one line mm -hmm. point A to point B, one dimension length. That's it. Right. And then you have uh, like a well, imagine if this was a square. Right. Then you have length and height, two dimensions. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you have three dimensions, length, height and width, like your Rubik's Cube. Right. Uh, yeah, it, it, it can keep going. Right. But generally, most students, we don't teach past that because unless you go to school for it, like you don't need to know that. Um, well, unless you do physics and then you do time. But anyway, so this is just length and height, even mm -hmm. though it's a circle. I know kind of whatever, but go with me. I like the circles more. Um, so the problem with living in this world is that this circle and anybody who lives here can only see totally. along this dimensional plane. ain't that plane. a metaphor for, for our egos. It is. Yeah, there's a lot of studies now where they're talking about consciousness being a different plane because mm -hmm. they can't figure out what it is. So, of course, the next assumption is like aliens, higher dimensions. Sure. <laughs> but I'm like, eh, OK, I can believe that. So as you go up in dimensions, so this is just length and height, right? If you have a ball, now we're getting bigger. It's taking up more space because it has more dimensions. We have a thickness now. Mm -hmm. There's a width, right? So the idea is as you keep going up and up and up, yeah, but it's what's bigger. up? What's the fourth? Right. Because I always so, thought it was when people talk about this fourth is time. That's what physics like to say. But in the math world, we say the spatial dimension. So like a space. speak to me from terms yeah. of the movie Interstellar um, In Interstellar. They use time as the fourth dimension. And then the fifth dimension is the spatial dimension. It's so stupid because in math, we would say that's the fourth spatial dimension. It's that's like where, very a lot of confusing. people don't realize this, but there's yeah. like there's a lot of beef, like like comedy. Yes. You think of a lot of people from the outside. It's comedy is comedy. But there's the improv people and the stand up people. And they're always like stand up sucks. Improv sucks. Really? No. Well, yeah. Oh, people like I can't go to an improv show. And then people are like, well, you haven't gone to a good one. But also in the science world. That's how it is. The physicists and mathematicians have a lot of beef over the fourth and fifth dimensions. Yeah, because it's just, it's mostly, we don't have it with each other. It's how it's we, communicated. Who are you in, um, this in the math world, right? I understand mathematicians more than I'm going to understand like the physics 
perception of things. So because there wasn't enough women in physics, isn't that interesting? Is it, well, that was my original reason. Yeah, because there I forget what the first class was, but I walked in, and it was just like all white dudes, and I was kind of like, oh god, sign me up. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I don't know if this is the party I signed up for, but okay. I mean, it was pretty toxic. Well. Listen, I don't want to get into the the, the toxics, toxic of <laughs> Earth. I want to talk about the yeah. toxic of, of, of out of, of Earth a bit. Of, yeah. But fourth and fifth, uh, w- uh, explain to me spatial. Yeah, so the spatial is the length, width, height, like just spatial stuff you can touch, physical things that that's we can one, two, see three. and interact with. Theoretically, it can go up. That's what a tesseract is. A tesseract is a fourth dimensional spatial object. From Thor. Yeah, I mean, actually, what they did in that movie was pretty clever because whoever had it could like travel around. Uh And so if we were pretending, like, again, we have to like move around a bit. If this was our third dimensional world and we had like a 3D object, every time I lift off of here, it looks like right to them. It looks like, oh, they're gone. gone. They disappeared. But I didn't. I just moved. So you could like move super fast. You know, you've seen the uh, example where they fold it in half and they... Wormholes. Punch a hole through it, yeah. So the idea is basically that if you can access a higher dimension, you can go anywhere you want in the lower dimensions. So I want uh, uh, to, uh, I mean, I can't, I don't even know because there's so many things. Maybe we cut to some of your clips. Uh, if not, though, before I bury the lead, what's the name of your, what's your social account for people to follow? That I need to change. Uh, it's modern day Eratosthenes. You need I to know, change because no I one know. knows how to spell it. Well, when I first came up with the page, I was just looking for 50 people who I could talk to. And then I was like, fuck, here I am. Yeah. And so I try to just really emphasize my name's Ashley Christine. And hopefully that makes it easier. But Eratosthenes, uh, he's a real person who existed uh, during the Alexandria Library heyday. He ran it for a while. He was a mathematician, a philosopher, a musician. He was everything. Do you know so who Mark Poole like is? A, Mark Poole? Yeah. He's a Magic the Gathering mm-hmm. artist who drew the Library of Alexandra card. Oh, okay. You don't, you don't play Magic? No. See, isn't it interesting? Uh, to the outside, nerds are nerds. But when you zoom yeah. in, I like comic books and you it's know like how to different. build spaceships. Right. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, I don't know how to build them, but maybe I could like crunch the math out. But I have a question for you that there was always a curiosity to me. And I thought if I ever had Neil deGrasse on mm. uh, shorthand. Um, <laughs> of course. Oh, can I, I, you don't like him. Oh, no, I like him. I just don't think he'd like me very much. I don't think he likes people. He likes that one guy he has that podcast with. They get along like... Such a good They're like podcast. one hell of a pair. Yeah. yeah. They feed off of each other really well. What's I, it called? Stars and Stripes Star, or something? Star Talk? Yeah, Star yes, Star Talk. Yeah. I just, I just don't think he'd like me very much. I think Bill Nye would like me because he swears. And I'm like, yes. Do you ever watch but. Neil and Bill Maher talk to each other? <laughs> Because they're both, they're both. <laughs> I would have, love to see They're that. both brilliant with big egos. Yeah, and very op- opposing um, uh, logic on communication, which is interesting because really? they both know what the other person knows and respects that. But the way they talk to each other, it's a lot really? of this. I just picture because I'm brilliant with a huge ego that, <laughs> that he and I would have the same beef. I Bill Maher or uh, Neil deGrasse. N- uh, both. Yeah. I don't think I would get, I don't think th- either of them would like me. I think Bill Maher would intimidate me and which I'm not easily intimidated, but he's like, he just has that presence about him where you're like, oh my God, this guy could like rip me apart. Do you get intimidated? Place. Um, Sometimes it depends on who it is and what they've done. Like I respect Bill Maher. I like who he's gone up against. Pretty ballsy dude. And to do it on television is like pretty mm-hmm. impressive. Um, Thank you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like I don't think I could do it. I get eaten alive and I just live in my apartment posting videos and I get eaten alive and I'm like, ugh, I'm exhausted by well, it. Well, th- there's no place more toxic, more so than, than these than white apartment. mathematicians than online. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh yeah. They're, they're, they're the worst. And they have PhDs, of course. Um, Some of them. One of them does and hates the living shit out of me. And I found out recently we have a mutual friend and I texted my mutual friend. I was like, did you know? that he hates the living shit out of me. Every time I post anything, that guy rips me a new asshole. And he's like, I didn't know that. And he's a science person that tells you like what you're saying is wrong. No, he's a PhD mathematician, which is a level above me for sure. Right. It's a six plane. A six plan? The yeah, six plane. <laughs> six plane. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like, and he is, but I'm talking about really basic shit and I'm not wrong. So I'm like, dude, what the fuck? So I, I texted my friend and he didn't know and we've never spoken about it since. Well. So I'm like, you might be watching. Hey, I have so many people who hate Armenian. or love me or all of, so like I could be talking about anybody. Scoot do blabbery blue 
Scoop D. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs>